Now you always gotta give massive credit to a game when it can live up and even surpass your expectations. And even with some uh, questionable business practices by the publishers, you can't stop recommending it to everyone you meet. Well, Metro Exodus has surprised everyone kinda and lived up to its expectations in most ways. So if you got the time, stay and listen. I'll give you my honest opinion on Metro Exodus. Metro Exodus is set after Metro Last Light's redemption ending and embodies the overarching theme of the last book in the Metro series, Metro 2035, which is Artem's search for survivors outside the Metro tunnels. However, it's not long before he finds evidence of life outside the Metro, and with the help of Anna, the Spartans, and Miller, they set off to find a place they can call their own. The journey takes them all over Russia and its various landscapes and environments, which are all beautiful and deadly in their own ways. And in classic Metro fashion, lore and story elements are often told through the environment and characters and dialogue, which there are a lot of. Still though, the developers have chosen not to give Artyom a voice outside the loading screens, meaning unfortunately most of the conversation is pretty one-sided. But thankfully, the characters you meet throughout the game are genuinely likeable, and you go to love each of them and their quirks. Now a big portion of any game is its presentation, and thankfully this game doesn't skip out on that either. The game's vistas and locations are, well, they're bloody breathtaking. I think this honestly might be one of the best looking games to ever come out. In my opinion, even Skyrim with EMBs doesn't look this good. But thankfully, the game doesn't sacrifice in the performance department either, and the game ran pretty smooth throughout. With the exception of this weird stuttering issue I got, despite having my game on an SSD. Otherwise, the game ran great on ultra settings for me. My PC specs will be in the description so you can compare it to yours and see how it may run. Now, I've heard a few reviewers describe the game as a controlled open world game, and I feel that statement is actually pretty accurate. While you can explore each map as you please, you always have some objective in the background that you must complete to move the story forward. But thankfully, your exploration is always rewarded with either crafting materials, weapons, or weapon mods, or some interesting story elements. And speaking of materials, like in the other games in this series, there's a big focus on ammo and resource management. However, in this game you can craft ammo and resources using your backpack and or workbenches provided throughout the levels. And in Metro Exodus, whenever you pick up a gun for the first time, its gun model is stored in the back of your train, the Aurora, allowing you to pick any weapon at the start of a mission when you head out. And you can customize these guns at nearly any time, with parts you've ripped out from other guns in the field, allowing you to transform a gun to fit basically any situation. Need to turn your assault rifle into a long range DMR? Go for it. Need a bigger mag for your assault rifle? Go for it. It's simple, I love it, it just works. Now honestly, perhaps the best part about the guns in Metro Exodus is you can actually use them. Now what I mean by this actually is that in the previous games you were held accountable for every kill you made, whether it be on a Nazi soldier or on a random bandit. However in Exodus, you can go guns blazing, or be the silent assassin in certain situations. Basically, if you come across a group of bandits in the game, you can light them up like a Christmas tree and still be able to get the good ending. It's only in situations where you're moving through areas inhabited by innocent NPCs, such as merchants, fishermen, or just general civilians, that you will be held accountable for your actions. Now this brings me to my only real gripe in the game though, the ending. Now my issue, I guess, isn't the ending itself so much as how quick it was. It felt like it needed another 10 to 15 minute scripted scene at the end before the final cutscene to help wrap up and solidify the game. You can of course look up the ending yourself, but I feel like it's better to play to properly understand how I feel about it. Regardless, this doesn't take away from my final verdict of the game too much. I still had an absolute blast playing the game. I loved it. 
Perhaps the ending will get expanded upon with DLC in the future, similar to how Mass Effect 3 got expanded upon with the extended cut, but I doubt it. The Metro series has always stood out amongst its competitors due to its ability to constantly deliver a rich and detailed world both narratively and visually, with gameplay to complement, and Metro Exodus continues this trend. The game took me roughly 20 hours to complete, which includes doing most of the side quests and activities, and it was honestly one of the most enjoyable games I've played in a long time. Though this is just my personal opinion, I do recommend waiting for the game to come back on Steam in a year, when its exclusivity deal with Epic Games has finished. So I can't really support their business practices. With everything I've said in this review, my final verdict on Metro Exodus is an 8 out of 10. The game only really loses points due to some minor technical issues I experienced and the ending, which I felt could be a little bit longer and have wrapped up the story a little better. But anyway, that's just one fan's opinion on the game, and I thank you wholeheartedly for sticking around and listening to my honest opinions on Metro Exodus. Now we are not just traitors, we are honest to God enemy saboteurs!